Hello all, it's Shifty here again, and today I'm going to be showing you 10 easy upgrades you can make in Space Engineers. These will all be vanilla, so you should be able to implement them in any playthrough. They should take less than a minute to set up, and I'll show you exactly how to do so as we go. Our first upgrade is a repair projector. We are going to add this. All you need is a projector block and a blueprint of the grid, so we're going to get that real quick. I recommend renaming this blueprint to something with the word repair in it, so it's easy to find later. You're also going to want to make sure before you take that blueprint to empty all projectors that are already on the ship of their blueprints. Make sure that no projectors have loaded blueprints in them, whether they're on or not, because that will get saved in the next blueprint and then it kind of creates a nesting situation where your file size can get pretty big. So on the repair blueprint, make sure all projectors are empty. And then once you have that, I recommend putting your projector somewhere safe somewhere where it's unlikely to take damage because the whole point of this is that when you take damage, you can turn this projector on. You're gonna project a blueprint of your grid overlaid on the grid itself. To set up the projector, open your menu, go to the projector block. I recommend adding the word repair to it so you know what it's doing. And then we're gonna find the blueprint that we just took. Once that's loaded in, we just have to align it so that it overlays our grid perfectly. This might be a bit tedious to do, but you just fiddle with these until it's all lined up and it says complete over here. If you're having a hard time doing this, I recommend going to your game options over here, game, go to UI, and then you can change the background or the UI opacity and make it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. A lot of times I think the default is that you can't see through it at all, and that's kind of annoying. Just Gameplay in general is a little bit easier if you have this turned down, so go putz with these, put them where you like them. I like them right about there, and now it should be fairly easy for you to go ahead and rotate your ship and line it up. There we go, it now says complete. Uh, something I forgot to mention, before you line it up, make sure to check this keep projection option, otherwise as soon as it's lined up, it will just discard the blueprint from your projector block. So you'll have to set it up each time, which is really annoying. So keep projection before you line it up. And then I like to check this show only buildable box. It's not really necessary, but I think it will just save a little bit of processing power. In my brain, that's how it should work. So that's what I'm going to say it does. Also along that line of thought, I like to keep this block off whenever I'm not currently repairing myself, because if you are in combat or something and you start losing blocks, now suddenly your projector is projecting things and it might cause you a little bit of lag, a little bit of a performance hit when your projector is suddenly projecting tons of stuff and you're dealing with explosions and this, that, and the other thing. So I just leave this off unless I'm going to be repairing myself. So we're gonna leave it on for now because I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example. Basically, if anything gets damaged now, like if I lose a block, my repair projector just shows me that block and I don't have to get out in my inventory. I don't have to get the block out and rotate it and set it up. I just get my welder out and I just weld it back up. Now I'm in creative, so it's insta welding, but you get the idea. If I was in combat and I lost some of my exterior blocks, I could just turn on my repair projector, come along with a repair ship or with my hand welder, and I could weld everything back up without having to figure out what exactly is missing, where things are missing, and how I need to orient them to get them placed. This is something that really is useful for any grid, and any grid that I think is complete, I will add this feature to. My favorite thing for this though is using it in small grids because I bang these up a lot. I use, on planets, I use small grid welder ships and oftentimes I'm not the greatest pilot and I'll just crash into stuff and I'll lose some parts here and there. But if I have this repair projector set up on my grid in a safe place, the repair projector hardly ever gets damaged. So I can just flip this on and then I can fly over to my main grid. Now I don't have my welder wall turned on. But if my welders are turned on, and I always have a welder wall on my main grids, partially for this reason, it's really easy to repair these small ships with large grid welders. Turn on my repair projector, fly in front of the welder wall, and now I'm back at 100%. Didn't have to place any blocks, didn't have to do any work, I just fixed my ship in about half a second. Our next upgrade is to use the AI blocks to extend the range of our turrets. Right now, the new turrets in the game, the artillery turret, assault cannon turret, and the rail guns, when you put them on a custom turret, all should be able to fire further than 800 meters. However, if you do not target lock, they will not fire further than 800 meters. Even though they're projectiles, some of them go up to two kilometers. I got an enemy sitting out there, and you can see our turrets are just loitering around. So we're gonna use our AI blocks 
to target lock for us so that our turrets can reach their maximum range. All we need for this is an AI defensive or AI offensive block. I like using the AI defensive, so that's one I'm going to show you how to use. We slap down our block pretty much anywhere. I wouldn't recommend putting it on the top of your ship, but this is just an example, so it doesn't matter. For settings, we want the block to be on. We want target locking enabled. That is crucial. And then I pretty much have everything just off. I don't want evasive maneuvers. I don't want this block to fly me around at all. That's partially why I like using the defensive block, because it doesn't need an AI move block at all. And then if we want the turrets to actually be functioning, we set the AI behavior to on. And you'll see that right away. As soon as it takes about five seconds for the AI block to target lock, and immediately our turrets start firing. This one here should be targeting in in a few seconds. They take a little bit to rotate around. But there we go. Now all of our turrets are firing. This trick works for static grids, mobile grids, large grids, and of course small grids. If you are going to be using this with a grid that's mobile, I recommend adding a event controller to it that will simply detect if your cockpit is occupied and turn off the AI behavior when the cockpit is occupied. Because a lot of times I like to be able to target lock things myself and I don't want the AI to be taking control of my ship at weird times. So in the event controller, we choose the cockpit occupied option. Make sure to select your cockpit from the available blocks and hit add block. And then we go to select actions. In the first slot here, we want to set our AI behavior to off on the block. And then in the second slot, we want AI behavior to be on. And now you can see if I jump into third person, our AI behavior is off, indicated by the green light. And when we jump out, this light turns blue, indicating that our AI behavior is on. Now, if you want the AI behavior to be on while you're flying the vehicle, at least for the AI defensive, this does work. You can turn it on yourself, and then instead of you manually target locking different objects, the AI block will do the target locking for you, which is kind of nice. I'm going to bring this ship into range just to show you how this works. I'll turn the AI target locking on. It should be close enough to fire now, and there it goes. Pretty simple, and this will work whether I'm in the ship or out of the ship. I jump out, and it will continue to do the target locking because the AI behavior is on. Now it takes a little bit for these to recharge, but you'll see them fire in just a second. There we go. Now, this is not a trick that I always use for my builds, but this is something I always use for my bases and for anything that I have parked, because it ensures that my grids are defending themselves at their maximum range, whether I'm there or not to target lock. Our next upgrade also has to do with target locking, but this time it's on the receiving end. Basically, you can detect when your grids become target locked, and you can use that detection to trigger all sorts of things on your ship to happen. This functionality is in the control seats. Control seats, cockpits, and remote controls all have this. If you scroll down, there's a button that says Setup Actions. Now, when you are target locked, it will trigger whatever is in the first slot, and when you are no longer target locked, it will trigger whatever is in the second slot. I always put timer blocks in these so that I can trigger more than one thing to happen at once. When I become target locked, I like to trigger some changes in my environment. I turn off all of my main lights and turn on a flashing red light or a strobing red light for a visual indicator. And I always have a siren go off for an audio indicator. This lets me know immediately that I am being target locked. And then I also have my ship automatically prepare for combat or evasive maneuvers. I turn on all my thrusters, all my gyroscopes. I shut a bunch of doors. I make sure that my turrets are turned on and can target properly and then I make sure my survival kit's on, or any sort of medical bay, just a way to respawn in case I do get killed. To show you that this does indeed work, I'm gonna turn my turret off, switch to number two, we'll turn off a whole bunch of thrusters, heck, we'll turn off our gyroscopes too, and then we will just pull forwards. This ship is owned by the space fighters right now, so when I get close to my base, it should target lock me, and then all of my lights and sirens and thrusters and whatnot should pop back on, getting close okay now we're within range within five seconds we should get the alarm as soon as it target locks us there we go it target locked us you can see all of our thrusters are back on if i jump out you can see my light is strobing when it's dark out this becomes very obvious even from the outside of my vehicle like if i'm flying in space i'll see that light strobing even from the outside of my vehicle so it's kind of a nice as a visual indicator if you don't hear the siren going off you can at least see that you are suddenly getting target locked. And because you have full mobility now, you can immediately take evasive maneuvers. You can turn around, fly the other direction, or just go up as fast as you can. 
do whatever you need to do to get out of there or fight back. Once you are out of range, the alarm should go off and your light should all go back to normal. And there we go. Our next upgrade is something I specifically do for servers that have forced respawn or automatic respawn where you respawn at the nearest point where it's possible. What I like to do is on every grid that I have survival kits or a place to respawn, I will set up a timer block so that I can turn off my survival kits at that location and the timer block will automatically turn them back on after a short period. This will allow me to turn them on and off respawn at a different location to get where I want to be and then after a short period their survival kit will turn back on so I can do the exact same thing to get back to this location. See that one just turned automatically back on even though I had it off. The way I do this is with a timer block. It's really simple actually. The settings for the timer block are pretty straightforward. I like to set the delay to about a minute and a half. I find that that's a good amount of time and I do set it to silent because I don't like hearing a ticking constantly in the game. It gets a little bit annoying to me. For our actions, what I do is I put the survival kit on the hotbar, set to toggle on, and then the timer block will be set to start. Now you can come out and you can hit trigger now or start however you want. And now basically every minute and a half, it will turn the survival kit back on and start itself up again. In addition to the timer block setup, I always like to have a button. It just makes my life a lot easier than having to go into the menu, though it is pretty quick to just open the menu, toggle the block off. Having a button or some sort of switch next to my survival kits or somewhere convenient in my ship is preferable. Our next block is probably something a lot of you are going to laugh about, but in reality it's something which probably would have saved you at least one of your ships if you had it, and that is the parachute hatch. These bad boys right here can be placed on any grid, large or small, and they have conveyor access point. Now they do use canvases as a consumable, so you have to make sure that you have canvases going to it, but you can place these basically anywhere on your ship. And I put these even on my rovers, perhaps that's a bit excessive, but I pretty much put these on anything that's not nailed down. And I can tell you for certain that I have never lost a grid with a parachute hatch on it to falling out of the sky. Now, like I said, you can put these however you want. You can put them sideways, you can put them upside down, you can put them underneath other blocks or completely buried in your ship as long as you have a canvas in it so i recommend at least having it conveyed in but as long as you have a canvas in it you can deploy the canvas the canvas will go directly through all the blocks it has no hitbox you can just bury them wherever is convenient to you and that makes them very easy to use and for what they give you in peace of mind i think they're definitely worth adding now remember, putting the parachute hatch on your ship is not all you're going to have to do. You are going to have to deploy them, so I highly recommend getting some sort of uniform system that you use on all your grids for deploying your parachutes. Now for me, that is putting my parachute deploy on my third hotbar set on key number three. So on every single grid I have that can deploy parachutes, that is how I deploy my parachutes. So anytime I'm in the air, no matter what I'm flying or what I'm doing, or if I'm driving a car and I go off a cliff, if I start falling out of the sky, I can hit control three, three, and my parachute will deploy. I don't have to think about it at all. It's a really easy key set to hit for me. So that's the one I went with, and it is uniform across all of my grids. I also recommend that whatever set of keys you choose for this, the one that deploys your parachutes, you should set it to only open, not open and close. You can add another one to your hotbar that's open and close, but set the one that you always smash to only open so that you can just spam that key as hard as you want and you know that you're going to be able to deploy your parachutes. Next up, we have docking remotes and cameras. All this requires is a remote control and a camera. And I usually take my remote control and I face it the direction that my connector is facing. So you can see right here, this is how I would orient one that is for this back connector. And I put a camera somewhere where I can see the edge of the connector. And that will make lining things up a lot easier. Hopping in the ship here, you can see on my control set, I actually have this set up for the back and for the bottom here. I got a camera snuck up in there. But if I hit number seven, that will switch me to controlling my ship with the backwards facing remote control. And if I hit seven again, it will switch me to looking at the camera. On the bottom of the screen here, you can see I am set up with the connector in view. And this will make flying my ship, basically I'm flying it as if I'm flying forwards right now. And it makes lining up super easy. 
all of the default settings in the remote control block are just fine. You don't actually have to change any of them. You might have to change your forwards direction. If you don't orient the remote control block in the direction that you want to be your new forwards direction. So you might have to tweak this, but if you just place the control block intelligently, you'll never have to tweak anything inside of here. Again, on your hotbar, I really do recommend that you put the control block control on a number. And then when you hit that number and you are controlling with that control block, you have your camera on the same one. And that just is for super easy toggling between the two. Right now, I'm driving my ship from the cockpit position. So forwards, I'm pressing forwards right now. If I want to go in the reverse direction, I just double tap seven. Now I'm going forwards in the back direction and I'm already looking that way. It makes my life super easy. If I want to be looking down and controlling down, I just double tap six and now forwards is down. If you want to take this type of setup to the next level and really get a lot of utility out of your cameras, I definitely recommend considering which directions your ship might want to fly in, regardless of whether or not you're connecting. For example, my drill ship here likes to fly backwards when I'm coming out of a tunnel. I'll use this to tunnel down to some ores, mine the horizontal ore vein, and then I will back out usually, because that'll be the way I'm just naturally facing. So I'll also use my connecting camera to back out. Upgrade number seven is to add decoy blocks to your grids. Now, this is not because they are going to help you with incoming fire from other players, but mostly because they act as lightning rods. If lightning would strike anywhere within 50 meters of a large grid or small grid decoy block, I did some testing here, and it turns out the range is the same, despite what the outdated wiki says. Anyway, if lightning would strike within 50 meters of a decoy block, it instead hits the decoy block itself. I can display this by just spawning in some lightning here with the smite command. See, I'm aiming within the checkerboarded region and the lightning will always strike the decoy blocks. But if I aim outside that, it hits wherever I'm looking. That is just how lightning works. Now, this works whether I'm aiming at the grid or not. So any lightning that would not strike your grid, but is within 50 meters, it will also strike your grid. So you will get hit by lightning more, but it will always try to hit your decoy block. It does seem to prefer a large grid decoy blocks over small grid ones. But if a large grid decoy block is not in range, it will strike the small grid decoy blocks. If you want to keep your decoy blocks up and protecting you from the lightning, I highly recommend you have some sort of setup where you have a welder which will re-weld your decoy block automatically. This works great for bases and for large grids, not so much for small grids, but it's a great feature to have if you're on a stormy planet and lightning is constantly striking around your base. This will attract the lightning to the decoy block, and as soon as any of these blocks here get damaged, it will repair all of them. This does also work with antennas. See here, I'll spawn in some lightning not facing the antenna, and it still hits the antenna. The range on that is significantly shorter, so yeah, you can use them if you want, but decoy blocks are certainly much better. Usually the decoy blocks are the things you want to get hit anyway, because they're not critical for any other function. Another fun fact regarding lightning is that trees in Space Engineers also act as lightning rods. See, I'm not aiming at that tree, but because I'm aiming close to it, the tree gets struck instead of the ground. Now, if I don't aim at the tree, I should be able to just strike the ground right over here as such. Pretty cool. It's actually pretty fun to play around with too. It's a fun testing session that one. Our next upgrade is something fairly basic but I incorporate it into almost all of my builds. Pretty much anything that has a door on it I have this setup on and that is I make my doors automatically close every 20 seconds. I don't like turning around and closing doors behind me but I do like my doors being closed so every 20 seconds, I have a timer that just repeats itself and tells all my doors on my grid to close. The timer block setup is as follows. I always set it to silent. I set it to about 20 seconds. You can have it longer or shorter. Shorter delays will more often shut a door right in your face right after you open it. And longer delays just don't shut the doors as often. I find 20 seconds is kind of a happy medium where doors are very rarely shutting in my face right after I open them, but they're almost always shut. In the actions, all we have is this very same timer block on the hotbar set to start again, and then a group with all of my doors in it set to close. Once you have that set up, you can go ahead and just click trigger now or start, and it will just start looping in every 20 seconds or however long you set the delay, it will close all the doors on your grid. 
Next up, we have something which I've been adding to a lot of my grids recently. I like to think of it kind of as a periscope. It's basically just a camera that you can rotate and look around and zoom in and get a good view of things from a distance. I really started using this with my small grid only playthrough. That's what this ship is from, the Dawn. And you can see underneath here, I have an upside down periscope basically. This pops out with a little piston, goes down and I can get a good view of things. I flew all over Mars in this ship and I was looking for beacons, antennas, player bases, and all sorts of stuff, and that ended up being super useful. So recently I've been adding this to a lot of grids. Now, if you have the DLC that gives you this little block, I believe it's Warfare 2, um, you can use this. This does double as a camera. It's not just a light. If you control it, it controls like a camera, but it kind of has the downside that if you stick it on your ship sideways, you kind of have to control the thing sideways. And if you put it upside down, your entire view and everything is upside down. So I do still kind of prefer using the old rotor hinge and camera setup, which is what I did on this ship. You can set this up with a custom turret controller. And then when you control that, you have access to the camera and it just controls just like this device would. So you don't have to have any DLC. It just saves a little bit of PCU if you can put it upside right and uh, on your ship how you want it. So I'm going to show you the setup for this real quick. Get rid of all this junk. And we'll just use our small grid only Dawn Periscope. Hop in the seat here. And you can see on my hotbar, I can just click three. That's control for my custom turret controller, and then I also have the piston on my hotbar so I can lower myself down. But, got pretty good sight. If I want to see a base more close up, this lets me see that, the, hey, there's a turret on that base before I get anywhere near it. If I wanted to see this a little bit closer, I could see what's going on over here. I found this really useful for scouting and spotting bases before I got close to them, because I didn't really want to take this ship too close to a base that might shoot me down. And also when I was in space scouting out the planet from there, having that camera able to zoom in on the planet's surface from space actually made seeing all the little voxel deformations a lot easier. So I could tell where bases were before I even came down to the planet. To set this up, you don't have to do anything special with the hinge or rotor, but you do have to change some things in the custom turret controller. You have to come down to the azimuth rotor and the elevation rotor. Now, these don't have to be rotors necessarily. They can be hinges, as is stated, how I've chosen them. But you do have to make sure that these are set up. These are how you rotate your camera. And then, of course, select your camera that you have mounted on it. I increased the speed a little bit, so I had a little bit faster controls. But that's basically all you have to do on here. You don't want enabled AI. You don't want aim at sun, because you're going to be controlling it manually. And then on your hop bar, you just drop the thing here and you choose control your list probably looks a little different but you just choose control from the list and then when you're controlling from the ship you can just click that number on your hotbar and you'll get control of the camera as if it was a little periscope the final upgrade i have for you today has to do with air tightness i think a lot of you are going to see this coming but i took us up into space to display it for you anyway and that is, of course, to hit the like and subscribe button. I mean, I had to try it, right? No, seriously, though, the upgrade is basically just to use these blocks to make your grid airtight. You can see I just walked in from space. Out here, I have no atmosphere, and it's freezing. And you can see the door is wide open. I'm not losing atmosphere at all in here. You might wonder why, but basically, there are a ton of blocks in Space Engineers where you can walk through the block, but they are airtight. Now, a ton of the windows are like this. For example, all the ones here, tons of these ones, basically all of these blocks, um, except for the ones on a flat face like so. But all the curved ones, these are all airtight. You can I just take your pick? I can get rid of this and I can just put this here, for example. And look at this, still airtight. Tons of blocks, most notably windows and these panel blocks. You can walk through them but they are completely airtight. So I like to put these on my doors. And uh, yeah, I just set my door to a, a little sensor and then it automatically opens. I don't have to deal with touching buttons or anything and I don't have to walk through multiple doors. Now, if you want to make a airlock that works like this, you can do that as well. 
Here's an example of an airlock that is immersive, but still uses what I like to call the keen airlock, which is just any block you can walk through. Here's another example of a block that's perfectly airtight. I'll just open this outside door. You can see I have oxygen in here. I have a vent in here. And uh, yeah, walk outside, no air. Walk back inside, high air. It's a way of ensuring that your airlocks never, ever, ever let air out. And I also like to use this not just in airlocks or places where I'm going outside my ship. I like to use it to section off different areas of my interior as well. You can see right here, this is actually an airlock, a completely open airlock that I can walk through, but an airlock nonetheless. So the front part of my ship up here is completely separated from the air in the back part. If I lose my oxygen up here, it's not going to change anything on the back half of my ship because this right here is actually an airlock this block right there. Now you can do all sorts of funky stuff with this. Um, a lot of times I will completely hide my little airlocks using a block on the stairs, maybe a block like that, because then this entire block above the staircase is airtight. So I could go like that, I could remove this. This is still an airlock. It's just something super simple that you can add to your builds and people don't even have to know you're doing it, right? But if you have friends that play the game and just don't ever wait for your airlocks and they're constantly letting all your air out and it's a little bit frustrating this is an easy way to remedy that well that is going to be it for this video hopefully you learned something new and you can apply it right away to your builds if you've got ideas of your own and you want to share them definitely drop them down in the comments if i get a lot of good ones maybe i'll make another video out of your comments that'd be pretty sweet if you do want to see a video like that when it comes out, definitely think about subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, you can also hit that like button. It does help the channel a lot, but for now, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.